Hi, it's Dave from Dave's Outdoorsy Stuff. And today I thought we'd have a look at making a finger stick owl, which is one of these little guys right here. Um, it's a beautiful, hot, lovely day uh, today. And unfortunately that's playing havoc with the camera here. So I can't get it up too close. So I'm gonna move the camera in a bit to get a closer view. But to carve one of these little guys, all you're gonna need is a stick about the size of your finger, which hence the finger stick owl. Uh, you're gonna need yourself a knife. I'm gonna be using my flex cut detail knife. And uh, if you wanna get extra fancy with it, I'm gonna give it a go. You don't have to, but you're gonna need yourself one of these lovely little U-shaped gouges here as well. They don't need to be expensive. They just need to be sharp. That's all you really need. Right, let's get a bit closer and have a look. Okay then, so here's just a selection of some of the ones I've done before. Um, we're going to copy something a little bit more like this one here. Um, and this one's done up fairly similar to, similar to it as well, but with a little bit more detail in there. Just cleaned up a little bit more. But uh, similar to these guys here is what we're going to do today. But take the design, play with it, do what you want with it. I've been coming up with this design for a little while now. You may have seen like five minute owls and things like that. Uh, but uh, this is my own sort of take on it as well. Something you can easily do when out in the woods or uh, in the bush or whatever you want to call it and just have a part, have a knife with you and you just want to have a go. Uh, perfect thing for a Swiss Army knife. You've got all the attachments there that you'll need as well. So um, this guy is a little one that uh, I had a go at burning with. Not one of my favourites, but it's nice to keep them and just have a nosy through every now and then and see what you're doing. This is one of the first ones I did. Didn't put any eyes in this one. Looks a bit more like some sort of uh, superhero token, I think, but uh, quite like him. Uh, some others in a different type of wood that really show off the colourings on there a little bit more. As you can see by this guy here, left on the, the sides to see what that came out with. But it's worth keeping all these little plays that you have, just to, so you can come up with an idea of uh, your favourite types as well. And uh, I don't know if that will, I can get that to focus on the, on it too much there. Ah, there we go. But there's a nice little tiny one uh, there that I had a bit of a go at as well. So, but ideally as well, what I've found is a, a stick size, about the size of your finger or so, similar sort of width, similar sort of size. And that is what is going to really help you out on that one. Right. So as I said, you're going to need your knife. I'm going to be using a flex cut detail knife. You're going to need a gouge. This is a, a small U-shaped gouge, and that's going to help us get those little patterns of the feathers on the front there. Um, and then uh, to really bring that out as well, um, you're going to need some of this, which is basically the rubbish left over from your tea bags at the bottom of the pot. Collect it up. It's great for coal rosing, which is the technique we're going to use there. I'm really bringing out the colour. And then the last thing, something small, sharp and pointy just to help with some of the eyes there as well. Again, you can use the end of your knife, but I tend to go a little bit wrong every now and then with that. As you can tell with my detail knife, I broke the tip off a while ago and rounded the edge instead. So keeps it a bit stronger, but you do lose that versatility a little bit as well there. Okay, so let's give this a go, shall we? Okay then. Right, we're going to start off by sorting out the top of the head there and really rounding that off. So first of all, you want to get in a slow sweeping cut from about knife width or so there, but round about a centimetre um, or about half an inch if you're American and um, you go by inches instead of centimetres. Really, to be honest, I, go, I prefer to go by inches myself a lot of the time, but centimetre seems to ring true on this one for me. And as you can see, I'm doing it on both sides there, so I'm really coming in quite symmetrical with it at the moment. That will change over time, so don't worry about making it too neat. And you want it to just get into the pith in the middle, and obviously every wood is a little bit different by the thickness of the pith, even every, every different tree is different, but you want it around about that sort of distance as well in there. Okay, now what we're going to do is slowly bring it in into the middle, creating that small curve, that characteristic eared look that you get of the owl. Now, obviously, being a fresh green wood, the pith is going to be really, really, really spongy, especially on this, this is a piece of sycamore. I wouldn't recommend carving sycamore when it is dry. You may as well try and carve a piece of granite 
uh, but green it's a wonderful wood to work with and it can be really really quite effective with the colorings on it as well okay so that's about as far as I'm going to go on that one just yet now obviously what I'm going to do with this as well is there is a lot of neatening up if you want it to look pretty and everything else but we'll do that I'll do that off of camera um, we'll just get the basics in here because that's just easy stuff that's just playing and fiddling around with it afterwards okay then so we've done the ears on that what we're going to do now is just cut them in ever so slightly there about there nice stop cut into it and then carving in nice and small so you're getting that pointed in ear look of the owl i'm going to take the bark off of that being careful not to take too much of the ear off at the same time it's worth noting as well i am wearing cut proof gloves uh, you may have noticed earlier i was already sporting a plaster uh, from just a little cleanup of another project and I thought to myself ah oh, you'll be all right without gloves and you can guarantee you won't be um, I'm quite accident prone I'm nearly on a first name basis with the nurses in my local minor injuries so it's probably best I wear gloves okay so we've cut in on the ears there a little bit now we're just going to start outlining the head a little bit so we're just going to go around with a small v-cut in and out there like that and I'm going to follow that all the way around the outside rolling it around the knife in 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 and in and just follow that all the way around hopefully with a bit of aim you'll meet on the other side but you might just need to do a little bit of bodging just to get that in place ah, close enough there we go see a little bit wobbly but that's okay it's character doesn't matter not everything has to be perfect and you can make it as perfect as you like it you can guarantee you might not think it's perfect but someone else will okay so that's what we've got there for that outline now we're going to put in a little bit of head i think so line your knife up with the corner of the ear and down to the middle and then just press that in to get a bit of a line and then the same on the other side and you have very lightly made a line there where your beak and the brow of the owl is going to go so now you just want to undercut it just a tad you're going to we're going to go back in in a little while and neaten that up and you're going to do the same on the other side turning it around because that's the way i prefer to do it rather than slip and cut myself i mean cut resistant gloves do as they say but they're not fantastic against the odd stabbing so okay so we've got a nice v in there as well kind of looks a bit foxy at the moment but don't worry we will turn that more into an owl okay now i'm going to go around you can leave the bark on if you want but over time i've just grown to really prefer to have the bark off there and only really have the bark on the wings but who knows in a year's time after doing a few more of these i might decide i want the bark to stay on you never know and you can apply this sort of principle to any size. It's a great starting block. If you wanted to do something far more detailed, it's a starting block. Something you can do. If you're just doing it as a little whittle around a campfire, anything like that, then it's just a bit of fun to do. All it's got to do is look somewhat like the original, what it's meant to be. Okay, so that's the beginning of the head. Now, we want to go about the head's width down again. And then at a slight angle from the middle... We're just going to roll it in there, another tight one, and then undercut it in there as well. Okay, just like that. And then the same on the other side. Now, I won't say I'm going to get this perfect first time because that's going to jinx it. There you go, saying that. I've already just said it. But when you, if you get the angles right on both sides, you should have the tail in spot on the right place on the back doesn't matter if you get it wrong because we are going to cut all of this out from underneath anyway to make it look like it's perched on top of a, a tree branch so what we're going to do now is just carry this round to the back okay and then the same on the other side Now, 
that's almost there that's almost center but it's not quite so now I'm just going to work backwards again from that part and undercut it again so it's more in the center there okay and then just even it out to make it look like a somewhat straight line it doesn't again it doesn't have to be perfect this is a carving more for your pleasure I get much more pleasure out of just carving away a piece of wood with no no idea what it's going to be really until it looks like it than the finished project but the finished projects always make me think yeah I've had a good go at that this sort of activity is just as much about mental well-being as it is about the product that you're carving there we go so all I'm doing now is taking it off around the bottom there so that we've got an idea of where our log is going to start and then where it's going to go to the owl. We're going to cut that out a lot more in a minute. But this is where we are at at the moment. Okay. So now I'm going to move to the back. And now that we've got that point at the back, we're going to slowly sweep in. So you're going to take one cut and then slowly notice the angle of my knife is starting steep and then it's ending flat. And that's, we're going to get that curve then on the back of the owl. And you might think it's looking like a flat plane at the moment, but it really won't when it's finished because you can just like this, just carve it up as well. And then you've got that nice curve at the back there. You could probably see it a little bit better if I do that, that lovely little curve at the back. So now, I mean, if we undercut this a little bit now, you'll get to see it a little bit better. You'll have to forgive any shoddy cuts on this one. I'm used to working a lot closer to my face, which sounds dangerous, but it really isn't. Um, so it's a bit difficult working at length in front of the camera here. So you can see that curve a little bit more like a flick of a tail there. And you can round this up a little bit if you wanted to. As the green bark dries out, it will turn another shade of brown. So it will slowly blend into the wings that you've already got, which is quite good. OK, so now we're going to do the wings. So. From about mid-eye, you want to start a cut straight down and then curve it around towards the back, right to the back. And then you're going to undercut it. Like that. And you might want to just put a little bit of a stop in the top there as well just to stop the bark peeling away in front of you. Because that will be disappointing if you're trying to keep certain bark on and then the rest just disappears right in front of you. Okay, like that. Again, a bit rough at the moment, but don't worry, we will clear that up, just like this. So we're just gonna take that bit of bark off, like that. And then the same on the other side, about the middle of the eye, we're gonna go in, and bring it right round. You're gonna have to forgive my camera angles on this one. It's my first carving video. I'm not sure how this all sets up. I've done it as best as I can in my little shed here, but hey ho, we're all learning together. Okay. There we go, see? Now we're gonna bring that cut up as well. So that just comes off and then again, the same, taking the bark off of the owl there. There. So we've got it much more looking like the original there. Okay. Don't be afraid. This is the way you'll start to neaten up as you go. Okay. So now I'm going to cut in this part a little bit more. Be careful. Control your knife. At this point otherwise you'll go straight underneath it and then as the, dry, the wood dries it's just going to end up curling and as funny as an owl with a tutu might seem when you've been working on a little carving you don't really want it to end up like that
Yeah. The weather here since lockdown has been absolutely amazing. Almost too hot. But hey, such as life goes. Right, so we've got a little bit more on that one there. When I go to cleaning everything up, I'm going to take that off a little bit more and make it look like it's on a bit of a smaller perch there. Now, I'm going to slowly get rid of some of the green on here because as it dries a tiny bit from the fresh cut, you'll start to see it come up a little bit more so you know how deep to the bark you've gone. Now, there's two ways of really getting this off. You could just use the edge of your knife and scrape it off, but then you do risk some of the fuzzies coming up as well with that. So personally, I prefer to cut, but each to their own. Everyone's different. You'll find, if you're new to carving, you'll find your favorites and what you prefer to do and not prefer to do. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the eyes now and we're gonna define this beak a little bit more. And I'm just gonna come in very finely. I'm gonna show you, try and get in as close as I can here just to show you how deep I'm actually going. But it's barely anything really like a tiny wafer thin piece of cheese. There. And this is where your knife being sharp really comes in. It stops any fuzzies coming in. You've got nice clean cuts the first time. So you know what's going on there. And then same on the other side from the bottom of the beak and up. So it's like a curved recess right from the tip of the beak right up and as you can see I'm showing some really bad habits here running my knife against the edge of my glove don't do that do as I say don't do as I do <laughs> as it were that is a terribly bad habit of mine but actually that probably explains to you why I've had so many trips to minor injuries okay so put the knife down for now that's the basics really that's all we need to do to get the basic shape and then that's just going to be neatening up defining the lines a little bit more afterwards but that's basically the basics there. Now, you can tell that's an owl. That's nice and easy. So if you want to have a bit of a more of a play though, we'll put in some more some eyes with our awl. Some people call it a bradle. Basically, it's just a big metal pointy stick. Now we're going to aim for the eyes. Just jab that in right there on one side and the same on the other. And then... You won't see it too much like that, but then if you just grab a pencil, just run the pencil on the inside of it, or a piece of charcoal from a fire, whatever you've got, that just really picks them out that little bit more there. Now, as for the feathers and a bit of coal rosing here now, the trick I've found with this sort of thing is, is you, you do tend to miss an awful lot when it comes to getting a straight line. So from the beak down to the, the fluff there, I'm just gonna draw a straight line and that is going to give us only lightly because I need to scrape it off again afterwards or sand it off but that's going to give me a center line now that I can go by and hopefully stop me from getting it all wrong then all I'm going to do I'm not wiggling I'm not gouging I'm just jabbing it in to get the outline straight in give it a wiggle side to side to make sure it's in deep and then back out again and then the same on the other side matching the middle there and then I'm going to do it again and again and I'm going to keep going all the way down and although you can probably barely see that on there right now other than what looks like a tiny bit of fluff coming up when we put that tea the leftover tea in there that's when you'll really see the difference now I've gotten down to the bottom here so I'm going to do one just off centre on that side, I think. And one just off centre on that side. Now, I'm going to take my gloves off because it is much easier to do without. And... Oh, I've lost my plaster on the inside of my gloves. Oh, well. Right. I'm going to get the tea. And then all you're going to do is just sprinkle it on. Now, of course, the wood is still a green wood so it's gonna stick in some places to the rest of it don't worry about that because that's where a trusty little brush comes out and then all I'm doing now is I'm really rubbing it in to those holes we've just made 
and then blow it all off and then we've got something a little bit more like that so it really shows off that those lines a bit more and that's your first introduction to coal roads in there obviously people use it in a lot more fancier settings fancier ways but that's just a bit of fun you can have to really show off a little bit of detail there just for a bit of fun and the more you work with it the better you're going to get there okay so let's uh what i'm going to do now then is i'm going to do some neatening up i'm going to ease up these edges a little bit tighten it in bring in the head a little bit more pull this in and then we can have a look at the finished thing when it's all done okay so we're all finished so all i've done there is you might be able to see i've just rounded the edges a little bit there obviously i've taken this in a lot further there as well i've uh, deepened in the coal rosing there at the in the center and i've really defined the cuts in there i do apologize about the focusing on my camera here um, I've gone in a little bit more there and I've just generally neatened and tidied it up a little bit more. But there it is, all finished as well. As with before and as always on most YouTube videos, they always say, you know, please do like and share uh, my channel. Um, have a nosy at uh, the, the subscribe button, I think is going to be up there. And then I think up there we'll have uh, a link to my last video all about sharpening your knives and keeping everything uh, clean and lovely. If it's not up there, it might be something else. It might be the future, and I've done a few more, but here we go. Thanks very much, everyone. Any comments would be hugely appreciated. Obviously, no trolling, but any uh, constructive feedback would be amazing. Cheers. Bye.